welcome back to the workshop. In today's video, I'm gonna be making a pair of elegant side tables. This side table is completely wrapped in veneer and that is because my client wanted to use burl and it would be virtually impossible to make this table from solid burl because first of all, it's very difficult to find pieces of burl that are that large to get a full component out of. And if you did, because the grain is so swirly, the legs would actually be quite weak and could even snap. And secondly, if it was solid burl, it would be very expensive. Using veneer allows the table to be a lot stronger and also reduce the material cost dramatically. So having said that, the core material of the legs were made out of ash and the tabletop was made out of birch plywood, which gave the table a really nice weight to it. I first started by machining up some ash for the leg stock. I machined this square to 45 millimeters thick. Then I made a curved tapering template for the inside faces of the leg. I used that template to draw a pencil line on each of the leg and then cut it out on the bandsaw. Once I cut the first side, I kept that waste material and used some masking tape to tape it back on. This gave me more support when turning the leg 90 degrees to cut the next side. I then sanded the faces on the belt sander. I didn't need to go to a high grit here because obviously I was veneering over the ash. The burl I use for this project is fir burl and Fur is a very soft wood and it's very brittle, especially in veneer form. So this veneer kept cracking and splitting. So it was very difficult to work with as it was very dry and wrinkled. So a little trick I did was tape the whole back of the veneer sheet with masking tape. This kept the veneer together when I was cutting it to size and stopped cracks from forming or getting any larger. I veneered two opposite sides of the leg at the same time in the vacuum bag. The external face of the leg, which was flat, I put down on a thick board of MDF in the vacuum bag, but because the internal face of the leg has that tapered curve, the board on top of the leg in the vacuum bag needed a flex to that shape. So I got a strip of five millimeter thick MDF to put on top of the leg, so that would press the veneer down in the vacuum bag. I used tight bond cold press glue for veneer, and you wanna add a really thin amount of this as the fur is quite soft and you don't want the glue seeping through the veneer. When pressing multiple items in a vacuum bag at the same time, it's really important to separate the components out to get maximum clamping pressure. You want the bag to wrap around each component because most of the pressure is applied on the edges of each piece as the bag is being sucked down. So if you bunched up all the legs together, you're only really gonna be applying pressure on the two outside legs and the ones in the middle won't be getting as much pressure. And while that was drying, I moved on to the table top. I had to glue a few sheets of plywood together to get the thickness I wanted, and that was going to match the legs, which was 45 millimeters thick. I veneered the sides of the table top first, and then the top and bottom. If you're using veneer that is too dry and brittle and it keeps breaking, then you're gonna to wanna to use something called veneer softener. That is a solution that you spray onto your veneer. Then you put it into a vacuum bag or a hydraulic press in between two pieces of the wood. So that solution softens the grain in the veneer and as the veneer dries out, it will set into a flat sheet. So it's perfect if you do marquetry and you're not getting clean cuts with your crinkled veneer, it will flatten your veneer out again and make it usable again. So if you've got lots of old veneer that you can't use, highly recommend getting this solution. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please consider heading over there and following me. There is a link in the description down below. I post lots of behind the scene pictures and I also post short videos on tips and tricks, how to's and review videos. 
And actually, as woodworking is my full-time job and I don't have time to film every build I do, I also post pictures of builds I complete that I haven't managed to film for YouTube. So if you wanna see other projects I'm working on, check them out on Instagram. As the veneer was slightly wrinkled, I put a towel on the top and bottom of the tabletop in the vacuum bag, and that really helped apply pressure in all the uneven parts of the veneer. Once everything was dry, I moved on to the sanding. I decided to use an oscillating sander instead of my random orbital sander, as this is more gentle and uh, less aggressive than the orbital sander. The veneer is quite thin, so I didn't want to sand through it. And especially, I didn't want the corners to round over, which is common on an orbital sander. I did the final sanding by hand, adding an aris on all the edges. Now as this side table didn't have any stretches or under rails, I needed this joint between the leg and the tabletop to be extremely solid. And as it's just a side table, it didn't need a stretcher underneath as it wouldn't be taking a ton of weight. Having said that, this joint is extremely strong. I used three 10 by 50 millimeter dominoes in each leg. This virtually created a huge Mawson tenon. I used parallel jaw clamps to clamp the leg down into the tabletop. Once I clamped the leg down, I had to make a few adjustments, checking with a square that the leg was perfectly straight. You can see I used masking tape around the leg and on the tabletop, so if I had any glue squeeze out, it'd be a lot easier to clean that up after by just removing the masking tape. If you want to purchase a piece of furniture from me or interested in looking at my portfolio, please check out my website. I recently revamped it and added some new photos on there. A link will be in the description down below if you want to check it out. To finish the table, I use Rubio Monaco Oil Plus 2C in Pure. I tested a few shades out, but I really like how the Pure enriched the grain and gave it a nice antique feel. You can see the oil really brings out the grain and you can see all the swirls and the ripples. I love this grain so much, this fur burl might be my new favorite veneer. I hope you learned something in this video. Thank you for sticking to the end. Make sure you subscribe if you're new, comment down below what you think about these tables, and I'll see you very soon for the next video.